In retail, we like to analyze our sales. How many transactions were 0 to 250? 2. How many were 750 to 1,000? 3. That's known as a frequency distribution. But we want to be able to change one of the numbers. And when we hit Enter, we want our frequency distribution to instantly update. Now, I have like 50 videos on frequency distributions, including this epic video here from my statistics class that tells you everything about every frequency distribution and histogram you might need in your analysis. I also have one that shows the let function using qualitative data. But in this video, we have quantitative data, numbers, and we want to see how to spill our report. Now, you can go check out one of those other videos if you don't have Microsoft 365 with the new dynamic array formulas. But in this video, we got to see how to do this. Now, this is an Excel table. Our first task is to find the maximum sales number. So I use the max function with one equal sign. And in the Excel table, we can select the sales column by clicking at the top, close parentheses, and enter. So 883. Now, we need to round this number here up to the nearest increment of 250. We can use the ceiling math function. In the number argument, well, that's the number I want to round up to a certain amount, comma. The significance is 250. The last argument has to do with what happens when it's negative, so we leave that out. Close parentheses, and when I hit Enter, that's our new upper limit for the last category, 1,000. When this changes, the upper limit to the last category will change also. Now, how many bins do we need or categories? Well, we take the upper limit and divide by our increment. So we're going to have four, at least at the beginning. Now, for the lower limits, we need to start at 0, increment by 250. So 0 to 750. Here it's 250 to 1,000. In Microsoft 365, we can use the great new sequence array function. It generates a sequence of numbers. We want them to go down the rows, four rows in total. We don't have any columns, comma, the start. We're starting at 0, comma, the step or increment is 250. Close parentheses. And now when I hit Enter, it spills down the column. Now notice any cell below the top cell is grayed out. The formula only lives in the top cell. We can do something similar for the upper limit. Four rows, comma, comma. We're starting at 250, comma, and incrementing by 250. Close parentheses, and there's our lower and upper limit. Now when we get to counting, we have a choice. We could just use a pivot table, which is beautiful, and that's what we do most of the time. But if your goal is to have a solution that updates instantly, pivot tables don't do that. We also have the choice between count ifs or frequency functions. Now, the frequency function can only accept upper limits, and the upper limit is included. For this frequency distribution, I want the category Please count the sales that are greater than or equal to the lower limit of 0 and less than the upper limit of 250. So I'm going to use the count ifs functions when I get over here. Now, I'd like to be explicit and have a label here that shows that that's included and the upper is not. Now, for our label, we'll use algebraic notation. We'll get the lower limit, and we have to join that lower limit in double quotes the lower limit has to be less than or equal to the actual sales value. Then the sales value also has to be less than the upper limit. So we put all of that in double quotes, use the join operator, and there's the upper limit. Now, this won't work, but when I Control Enter, we get our label. We want this label to spill also, so F2. And if I highlight the F8 to replace it and highlight the cell with the actual spilled array and everything spilling below, it puts the magic notation in, the cell reference with the formula, and the pound or hashtag, which is the spilled range operator. The beauty of this is that it's looking at F8 and anything that spills. So if it changes, more rows, less rows, that notation automatically updates. 
And for this one, we can just type pound. And now when I hit Enter, it spills the label. Now our counting formula, we'll use count ifs, criteria range, we'll select the sales column, comma, criteria one. What we do here in count ifs is much different than we did here. We build the comparative operator in double quotes, greater than or equal to, end double quotes, and we join it to the lower limit. Now that right there is pointing over to the full column and saying, hey, you sales, how many of you are greater than or equal to the lower limit? Now we have to repeat in criteria two, the sales column, comma, then the upper limit in double quotes less than, and we join it to the upper limit. Now same thing here, I need a pound and a pound. That way both of these arguments here are forcing count ifs to spill, because each one of those arguments has four items. Later, it'll have more or less. Close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, there is our count. Now, if I come over and change this to 1, that is absolutely beautiful. If I add a new record below, clicking in the last cell and hitting Tab, Whole Foods, Apples, 1150. I'm going to hit Enter this time, and everything's updating. I can also change the increment to 500. And just like that, I have a completely different frequency distribution. Now, I know from using frequency distributions like this, the fact that we can spill and change the limits, it allows us to more quickly find patterns in the retail data. If we were doing this the old school formula way or with pivot tables, it would be a lot more complicated. So I'll end on 250. And bam, the power of Microsoft 365 Excel and spilled arrays. All right, if you like that video, click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. And if you want to check out a bunch more about frequency distributions, check out these videos.